Hello, welcome to Dungeon Drawers Podcast. I'm your host, Justin. Th- this is another of our weekly Mecha Anime Series re- reviews where we're reviewing The Vision of Escafane, which uh, originally aired on TV in 1996. It was uh, created by Studio Sunrise, which um, it's a 26-episode series based off of manga. Uh, I used to watch this show as a kid on Fox uh, Kids and on uh, YTV, which it was canceled on Fox Kids, but the YTV aired the rest of the episodes. And in 2016, there was like a Kickstarter for like it for this uh, anime to get re-released, which it got re-released by Funimation, which released um, the series, this series into two uh, sets, and they also released a movie, which we're gonna review at some point. Uh, maybe this weekend, I don't know. Um, yeah, so the story for this anime series, I'm just going to read the synopsis on my anime list. Hitomi Kanzaki is just an ordinary 15-year-old schoolgirl with with an interest in tarot cards and fortune telling, but one night a boy named Von Fennell suddenly appears from the sky along with a vicious dragon. Thanks to a premonition from Hitomi, Vaughn successfully kills the dragon, but a pillar of light appears and envelops them both. As a result, Hitomi finds herself transported to the world of Gaia, a mysterious land where the earth hangs in the sky. In this new land, Hitomi soon discovers that Vaughn is the prince of the kingdom of Finelia, which soon falls under attack by the evil empire of Cybok. In an attempt to fight them off, Van uh, boards his family's ancient guy Melif, Escafone, a mechanized battle suit, but fails to defeat them and Finella and Finelia ends up destroyed. Now on the run, Hitomi and Van encounter a handsome Asturian knight named Alan Shazar, whom Hitomi is shocked to find looks exactly like her crush from Earth. With some new allies on their side, Van and, and Hitomi they, they spell it Van, but it's pronounced Vaughn in the show. And it told me fight back against the forces of Zybok as the Empire strives to revive an ancient power. Um, so this anime series, I should mention, this was one of my f- first uh, fantasy anime that I watched like as a kid. So I have some n- nostalgia for this show. <laughs> Like, whenever I would play, like, a fantasy RPG, I would rename the character, like, Vaughn, after after the main character for this show. Um, yeah, so this show, it's partially, it's the thing where this is part war, uh, fantasy war drama, and also part romance. So, like, for the first half of the show is basically, it, it's that... It actually has a lot of uh, similarities to Star Wars, <laughs> if you can believe it. Um, where the first half of the show is the war drama, right? Where our characters are trying to, uh, are on the run from Zybok and they keep finding them, like, you know, uh, finding them off. Until, like, the second half of the show where it, it turns into, it turns basically almost into Macross, but not as boring as Macross. <laughs> Where you have li- love triangles and like you know uh, characters falling for like uh, for each other and stupid bullshit like that that you know has no interest to, uh, to me. <laughs> but like uh, rewatching it, um, I don't know. I, I was able to enjoy it. Um, there, there's some politics in the show. There's some there's some uh, mystery with the whole like Atlantis and like you know the the. Uh, the the twist that like the emperor of Zybok is Isaac Newton the the famous like you know uh, scientist who discovered gravity and who tried who apparently was the alchemist and tried to turn uh, you know what, what was it he tried to make gold out of something I can't remember what but like he tried to make gold using alchemy <sighs> lead into gold that's right right. And there's also different twists and turns, like Durandal uh, being the sister of <laughs> Durandal, who's a guy who pilots the, the red, like uh, guy Melif, uh, who turns out to be the sister, the long lost sister of Alan Shazar, and uh, the whole thing where, like, you know, 
Alan Shassar uh, hates his dad who went on a journey to discover Atlantis the secrets and abandoned his his family where I kind of I, I kind of find it funny that like he hates his dad but in a lot of ways he is his dad where like you find out like oh he he cucked the king of a he, he cucked the king of a neighboring country <laughs> uh, and like you know the the little they have a he has a little Jim at son that, that he uh, doesn't know that uh, his, his his son th- doesn't know that he he's his actual father even though uh, dude look at you <laughs> look at your dad and look uh, and look at yourself dude <laughs> Yeah, it's the thing. Well, I'll talk about the strengths of the show. The strengths of the show is like you have the really cool medieval mechs in the show, the guy Melovs. Uh, you have the really cool animation, the the care designs. While they're kind of like Sailor Moon esque, there's lots of shading. Uh, you have the Yoko Kano score, which is which is amazing. Though, like honestly, the the, the only song I really love is the um, Curse of Dragon song. And whatever song that plays during that scene where, like, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Vulcan Stratos, which is um, Vaughn's brother who betrayed Fennel and joined, uh, joined Cybok when he was doing, when he was tr- doing a ex- uh, science experiment trying to, t- to make, like, uh, make uh, Hitomi fall in love with Alan. That song was was also amazing, right? And also, if you're a fan of, like, um, cat girls, there's lots of cat girls. <laughs> lots of cat girls in this anime, right? The two twin sisters uh, who worked on their... Um, Vulcan, you know, were pretty cool. And, like, I, I love their mechs. Their, their mechs were all, also awesome. Uh, I, though I have a, I have a problem with the fact that you know technologically, the Zybox mechs are so superior to like everybody else's mechs that they really should like they should like they should have won the the battle at the end of the series <laughs> at the end of the series but like you know for plot convenience sake you know they had to lose even though they're they're able to like. Shoot! Their mechs are able to shoot flame floors, have the de- shoot liquid metal like spikes. And, uh, r- they have uh, liquid metal spikes and form swords. L- like they're th- superiorly like they can fly and they have ranged weapons and they have their stealth cloaks. So like mobility wise, they have more mobility. They have more range, and they have more destructive power. And they and they can use their liquid metal. Um, to make shields and stuff, you know, so like, su- like they're superior to the guy Melvs, like everybody's guy Melvs in every way, but they, you know, they still lose. <laughs> well, it, w- it mostly had to do with that bomb at the end, which like, w- like who came up with that bomb? Was that something like Vulcan did? Because <laughs> like Vulcan betrays, um, after his, his, uh, cat girl girlfriends die, Vulcan, um, switches sides. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. the The problems with the show is that it, in the second half, it does uh, get a little slow, right? And then there's the whole thing where, like, uh, I f- I actually found this funny. Where like, uh, out of nowhere, she starts to Hitomi starts to realize she has feelings for like uh, Vaughn, right? And like it's like it's funny because like. Most of the show, she's chasing Alan Shazar, and when he starts to have feelings for her, which is kind of weird, because, like, she's 15, and this guy should at least be in his, like, at least, he should at least be, like, 30, or something like that, uh, he starts, like, you know, he falls for a Tommy, and, like, you know, like, th- th- she was chasing this dude, like, th- the whole time in this show, and then, uh, you know, w- w- I just find it funny, like, uh, she she finally get the 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 guy she's chasing finally like you know uh you know finally wants her then she's like yeah i don't want you anymore <laughs> uh 
So that, but that is kind of realistic <laughs> in a way. <laughs> like I've had like girls uh, who had their crushes on me, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll, 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 I'll ask her out on a date. Why not? And then like they'll be like, oh uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> it's like that's the thing. People want, people want what they don't have, and when they can have it, like they're like, ah, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> but other than that, I would say. I would say if you look at the aesthetics of the show and the music, and the writing is not too bad, I would say this show is at least a 7 out of 10. Uh, though it does have its problems and it does get a little slow in the second half, it does pick up after like pick up after the um, the two cat girl twins uh, show up in the show, and then like you have like um, Vulcan. Uh, joining our main character sides, you know, that was cool. And then there's a really cool epic sword fight between like Alan Shazar and like um, and uh, Vaughn Fennell and their like guy Mavs, which was really well animated and really beautiful uh, looking. So, yeah, I was I would say it's a seven out of ten. Uh, I would say check it out for yourself and you know see if you like it right you can watch I think you can watch a couple episodes on YouTube uh, which I should mention I watched the uh, 2001 dub for nostalgic sake wasn't I, I did see like the first episode of the Funimation dub was not a fan of the casting for a lot of the characters so I stick to the old dub which they uh, though the the old show was censored I think they just overlined the they just Put the old dub over like the uncensored version of the show, so um, which I'm surprised that worked. But you know, it's it did. Uh, it, but even the uncensored version, like as a kid, was still pretty fu uh, pretty uh, uh, awesome with all the blood and stuff. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a show like a kid should, a little kid should watch. I'm so I'm so surprised that they aired this on TV back in the day. But I think they they. After a while, they did realize their mistake and like put it put on li um, later in the day. They it was like after a while, it was no longer Saturday morning cartoon. It was like yeah, put it like put it on at like fr Friday evenings. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I have no idea which series we're gonna review next. I'm feeling like we should review an '80s show. Um. Yeah, I think we'll review. We'll review Combat Armor Zab Mongol. Because I. Besides, because besides from that, my only other 80s anime is Dunbine, and that's a little too similar to this one. Yeah, so we'll, so we'll review uh, Combat Armor Zab Mongol instead. Oh, and if you're going to pick up this show on Blu ray, it, it, it can be pretty expensive. So I would try. Uh, I would try looking online first before you you get it, you get it through a store because it like I paid like I think I paid like eighty bucks per like uh, for part one and two not together separately <laughs> yeah so all right guys that's it for today's review um, maybe tomorrow or sometime this week I'll review the mo the Escavania movie which uh, does not have the uh, mecha if I'm if I remember correctly. <laughs> Well, uh, so they won't. I don't think it will still be a mech anime review, but yeah. All right. Peace.